Hello, this is future me. Um, I found out that uh, OBS and uh, AV1 encoding are crushing the living highlights out of the um, video file. So even though I've selected lossless, it is very much so lossy. Um, so I'm trying to tweak the settings. I'm going to roll back to NVENC encoding instead and H.265 encoding and um, see if that makes a difference. But uh, just wanted to note why the shadows are so crushed and everything is kind of blocky. Seems to be an AV1 encoding issue. Um, I was really hoping to be able to use AV1 encoding because it is amazing in the direction we should be going. But um, for right now, in OBS, it just seems to be overdoing the compression ratios. So uh, this has been Future Me signing out. All right, um, so this is a follow-up onto the networking system. Uh, video and um, I just got in the TP Link Deco uh, 95, I think it is, um, and got that set up. Had a little bit of issues getting it going in the beginning, but um, seems like all of that has kind of stabilized and it's working. It did not like having um, the backhaul system plugged in at the same time as the um, WAN port was plugged in. It seemed to not be able to differentiate in between the two, but a firmware update seems to have fixed that. Um, still not getting 100% of the networking speed that I should be getting on the desktop client here, but it seems like I tested the one downstairs and it was getting the full gigabit throughput and tested on the Wi-Fi and also getting the full gigabit throughput. So it's something having to do with this uh, desktop specifically. Um, and speaking of throughput, um, I was able to get a pretty much a hundred uh, gigabit throughput to the server using iperf2. Um, I was seeing peaks on the uh, Melanoc on the um, Microtech switch that were in the 100 gigabits range, and the Melanox cards were reporting roughly 90 gigabits of throughput. So absolutely blazingly fast. Um, still struggling with file transfers. So the file transfers are not occurring at the speed that I'd like them to. Um, I keep running into this weird 10 gigabit um, speed barrier, uh, for lack of a better term, that seems to affect not only file transfers, but um, like Crystal Disk Mark, I can read at 10 gigabits, write at 20 gigabits. And it's just, it's a weird system and I haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, I've tried using fast copy, I've tried using Terra copy, um, but keep running into that. 10 gigabits um, limitation. And even if I run TerraCopy and FastCopy on two different files off of the server from one from the um, Stripe array, array and one from the um, Quad array, but still getting the same, you know, 10 gigabit, it, additive to the 10 gigabit throughput so again I'm there's something I'm missing and I haven't quite figured it out yet so still looking into that and going to continue to investigate I may reach out on reddit or some other places and see if I can get some 
um, uh, ideas to at least where to start looking. So, um, yeah, the hopefully the TP Link uh, router is going to do well for me. I've got it in place. The nice thing about it is that it has um, 10 gigabit backhaul, and um, so it's got two 10 gigabit connections and two 2.5 gigabit connections. So I'm able to use the 10 gigabit to the um, Netgear switch, and then that branches out to all of the um, hardline connections. So I've got 10 gigabits going uh, through the network there. And then downstairs, I'm using one of the 10 gigabits as the wired backhaul. So I should be able to get as much speed as I need. And then um, I'm able to use the 2.5 to the PC downstairs. So that is getting, uh, and I did do an iPerf test on it, and I'm able to get 2.2 uh, gigabits per second on it as well. So that's all working exactly as it should. So really pleased with that. And then um, I've hooked up the plume as a bridge to this system. Um, and again, the network's getting really complicated really quickly. So um, the plume I'm going to use to try and get down to the uh, ring doorbell. Because the ring doorbell is three floors down. Um, actually, yeah, three floors down from the living room. And there's just a long ways to go. So what I've done is I've put the plume in the living room, in the stairs one floor down, and then the stairs two floors down, so that hopefully I can get a daisy chain going in between them. Still have an uh, open support ticket with plume. We'll see where that goes. Um, it seems my last message made it through to management, um, and they're at least willing to work on the issue. Um, but I'm going to try this other router and see, one, if I can get hair pinning to work, and then, you know, just try and get everything up and running. Um, it seems like, and I'm really bouncing around today, it seems like the... Um, Verizon Fios, when they rebooted the Ani, it um, it assigned a new public IP address to me, so I'm having to go back through and rebuild all of the um, DNS servers and stuff like that. So, um, and I still haven't even tried setting up static IPs on the TP Link yet, so. Um, got a long ways to go on that. Um, and yeah, so hopefully if I can get the, um, static IP set and then try and do hair pinning on the, um, TP link and see where we make it on it, I'm probably going to keep it, um, unless I run into some other major technical issue because of the wired backhaul is just leaps and bounds better than the plume system. Um, the plume could technically do 2.5 gig backhaul, but only when you massaged it. Uh, it was very finicky, because it's not technically supported, but if you rebooted it and got it to accept the 2.5 negotiation speed, it would actually backhaul at 2.5 gigs, but 
again, if any point in the chain didn't boot up in the correct sequence, it would default back to one gig. So, whereas the TP-Link just works out of the box. There's no, uh, I'm able to get the 10 gigabit backhaul going. 2.5 is working as well for the client machine. Again, the, the backhaul network is significantly better than the Plume system. The Plume is a little bit more set and forget, whereas I'm hoping the TP-Link is that right bridge in between set and forget and having all of the settings that I need to tweak available. So we'll see. I guess one other thing on the TP-Link is that off the bat, it did not show the connected devices like it should have. So it required me power cycling each device in the chain in order to get it to show up. Um, even though it was assigning, or at least it seemed to be assigning an IP address to it, but it wasn't showing up in the device list. So that made it very complicated to try and touch devices when you don't know what the IP address for the device is. Like the IPMI on the Super Micro board, it picked up an IP address, but I have no idea what IP address it picked up. So I ended up having to, um, because the IPMI, there's no way to power cycle it without completely power cycling the super micro board in its entirety. So I took that opportunity to pull out the um, Ethernet switch, uh, sorry, the Ethernet adapter, um, which should give me a little bit better cooling on the Mellanox adapter because um, they're not sandwiched in there quite as badly. Um, and there's really, I don't have a need for the Ethernet adapter in there anymore since I've got the Mellanox. Um, it's completely superseded the Ethernet. Um, and yeah, so got that in there, got everything rebooted, and it showed up in the TP-Link system. Um, just seems to be a, a, a weird bug. There needs to be a way to go through and manually refresh that whole system. Um, just so you can see what connected devices there are. Um, that would be a very big quality of life improvement. Now, granted, there is a high probability because I'm trying to... <sighs> not destructively recreate the network. So I'm using the same um, IP range, same subnet mask, um, and a similar um, network naming scheme. So again, there may be some if I had completely wiped and reset, it may have done a little bit better. Whereas I tried to keep as much of the network infrastructure intact when I switched over so that I wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, still had to do a lot of reinventing, but it, it kept me from having to completely change um, the IP structure and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, six of one, half dozen of the other. But yeah, that is where we're at right now on networking. The Mellanox continues to prove to be blazingly fast. Windows continues to prove to be very frustrating with the speed limitations that I'm running into. And in general, the stuff is working, um, which is more than I can say for most of the projects that I work on. Um, it is a breath of fresh air to just have a server that comes up and works in a pretty reliable and consistent fashion. So 
Um, hats off to the TrueNAS guys for making a very stable system. And with that, I'll sign off.